truly master the irregular verbs when you are able to say them in the blink of an eye without making any mistakes. Now, what are irregular verbs? Irregular verbs are verbs that have different patterns in the past and past participle. They usually appear in a list with three columns. The first column represents the infinitive, the root of the verb. The second is the past tense. And the third is the past participle. Almost all the students, including the advanced ones, experience some degree of difficulty when trying to reproduce the irregular verbs. So, even assuming you think you know all the irregular verbs, it is a very good idea to start paying attention to the problems you experience when trying to use them. Here are some of the most common problems. 1. Mispronouncing the following verbs. Come and become. It is not come or become. The right way to say these verbs is come, came, come. Come, came, come. And become, became, become. Become, became, become. Begin. The past participle is not begun, it's begun. To get this sound, try to pronounce la del tonto. A. Uh, begun. So let's see now how we pronounce this verb. Begin, began, begun. Begin, began, begun. Catch. The past tense and past participle is not caught, it's caught. Catch, caught, caught. Catch, caught, caught. Teach. The past tense and past participle is not taught, is taught. Teach, taught, taught. Teach, taught, taught. Choose. The past tense is not choose, it's chose. So it's choose, chose, chosen. Choose, chose, chosen. Eat. The past tense is not ate. It is eat, ate, eaten. Eat, ate, eaten. Fall. The past tense is not felt. It is fell. Do not confuse the past tense of fall with the past tense of feel. So, fall, fell, fallen. Fall, fell, fallen. Feel. The past tense is not fell. The past tense is felt. So, it is feel, felt, felt. Feel, felt, felt. Forgive. The past tense is not forgive. It is forgave. So, forgive, forgave, forgiven. Forgive, forgave, forgiven. Give. The past tense is not give. It is gave. So, it is give, gave, given. Give, gave, given. Here. The past tense is not heard. The past tense is heard. So, it is hear, heard, heard. Hear, heard, heard. Hurt. The sound is not heart. It is hurt. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Hurt, hurt, hurt.
It is always the same. Mean. The past tense is not meant. It is meant. Mean, meant, meant. Mean, meant, meant. Say. The past tense is not say. It is set. Says is the third person. So, say, set, set. Say, set, set. Read. The past tense is not read. The past tense is read. Read, read, read. Read, read, read. Two, second problem. Confusing the past participle of the following verbs. Arise, arose, arisen. Drive, drove, driven. Ride, rode, ridden. Rise, rose, risen. Write, wrote, written. Many students confuse the ing form and the past participle. They make the mistake of pronouncing them like this. Correct, arisen. Incorrect, arising. Correct, driven. Incorrect, driving. Correct, ridden. Incorrect, Riding. Correct. Risen. Incorrect. Rising. Correct. Written. Incorrect. Writing. Do you make these mistakes? This is obviously a problem of not paying enough attention to the sounds and saying whatever your mind thinks you should say. Your mind is not going to remember the right sounds unless you force it to listen and repeat the correct sounds. How can you solve this problem? Now, practice saying these sounds many times. Arisen. Arisen. Driven, driven, ridden, ridden, risen, risen, written, written. The E has a very short sound and it, it almost disappears in between the stronger sounds of the consonants that come after and before. Three, using was instead of were, in especially when asking questions. The confusion occurs because the student's mind doesn't connect the subject with the right verb. So, for instance, if he's saying, I was there, and then he must ask a question changing the pronoun to you, he will continue using was, like this. Was you there? To solve this problem, you must practice saying sentences like these many times. Were you at the party? Were you at the party? Were you there? Were you there? Were you tired? Were you sick? Were you sick? Was he there? Was he there? Was he at the party? Was he at the party? Was he sick? Was he sick? Were you late? Were you late? Was she in the room? Was she in the room? The goal is for you to automatically connect were with you. This is only achieved 
when you say it correctly without having to think about it, and when you immediately realize it is a mistake to say you was. Have you experienced any of the problems I have talked about so far? If you have, and you truly want to be an advanced student, you must put an end to all these problems. Therefore, we'll go over some suggestions on how to learn the irregular verbs in a more effective way. How to learn the irregular verbs more effectively. In this course, we are going to reinforce your knowledge of the irregular verbs through listening, reading, and repeating the sentences of your audiobook. But there are also many other alternatives you can use for extra help. Two very important pieces of advice. One, never, ever learn new sounds only by reading them. You should always listen to the sound of the verb first using softwares such as Google Translator. Two, do not pretend to gain fluency if you dedicate little time to the verbs as you go through this lesson. You should be completely committed to this goal and do some type of activity with the verbs every day until you completely master them. These are my suggestions. 1. Download apps to learn the irregular verbs. 2. Sing them. You can find in Lesson 12 links to videos that teach you how to sing the verbs. 3. Say them aloud. Please check the course material for a link to help you say them aloud. 4. Learn them in sentences. 5. Play with them. Games are not only for children. You can have fun learning the verse by playing. You can find an example of a game in the course material. 6. Make sentences with them. 7. Do all kinds of exercises with them. 8. Print a poster with them and stick it on a wall in your room. In Lesson 12, you'll find some examples of posters. If you make a poster yourself with the verbs you have trouble with, you'll learn them faster. Paying more attention and working on a subject always means more learning. 9. Create them. You can write, sculpt, cut, paint, sketch, or draw them. Use your imagination. 10. Teach them to someone. Teaching them is one of the most effective ways to learn them because you have to prepare what you're going to say. And by going through this process, you force yourself to learn them by heart. In Lesson 12, you'll find a list of irregular verbs. Please take the task of learning the irregular verbs seriously. Dedicate several days to master all of them. Now let's see how you can learn the irregular verbs with the audiobook. Please go to chapter 9 of your audiobook now and listen to it at least two times and then read it. As you'll see, I have highlighted the irregular verbs in the present tense or infinitive in light blue, in the past tense in pink, and in the past participle in green. Remember that what you are trying to do with this exercise is to dramatically improve your accent and fluency. So if you happen to feel that you know all these verbs, ignore the feeling 
and continue repeating and trying to imitate the native accent of the audiobook as much as you can. Listen and repeat aloud the following sentences. He said gravely. He said gravely. They told me you were at the opera. They told me you were at the opera. I was at the opera. I was at the opera. You went to the opera? You went to the opera? You went to the opera as Sybil Vane was lying dead in some sordid place? You went to the opera as Sybil Vane was lying dead in some sordid place? I was nothing more than a schoolboy when you met me. I was nothing more than a schoolboy when you met me. The painter felt strangely emotional. The painter felt strangely emotional. He said finally. He said finally. Who ran between the painter and the screen? Who ran between the painter and the screen? Basel, he said. Basel, he said. One month ago, you told me you would never exhibit it. One month ago, you told me you would never exhibit it. Lord Henry had told me. Lord Henry had told me. Perhaps Basel also had his secret. Perhaps Basel also had his secret. From the moment I met you, my life changed. From the moment I met you, my life changed. I was jealous. I was jealous. Every person you spoke to, every person you spoke to. I was only happy when I was with you. I was only happy when I was with you. You wouldn't have understood. You wouldn't have understood. I was scared. I was scared. I have told you. I have told you. Dorian Gray took a long breath. Dorian Gray took a long breath. A smile drew itself onto his lips. A smile drew itself onto his lips. For now he was safe. For now he was safe. Said the painter. Said the painter. Dorian shook his head. Dorian shook his head. When he left the room, when he left the room, he had to hide the portrait. He had to hide the portrait. Now he felt safe. Now he felt safe. As he went back to his room, as he went back to his room, he saw on the beautiful wooden table, he saw on the beautiful wooden table, the book that Lord Henry had left him. The book that Lord Henry had left him. He took it. He took it. It was the strangest book. It was the strangest book he had ever read. He had ever read. The story was about a young Parisian man. The story was about a young Parisian man. To sum up, irregular verbs are not easy to learn because their spelling differs greatly from their sound. Therefore, a variety of techniques should be used to memorize them. In this lesson, I suggest learning them by listening to a story and to reinforce and continue learning them by doing other activities such as singing, repeating them aloud, making sentences with them, or teaching them. If you feel you already know these verbs, concentrate on improving your pronunciation and fluency by saying them aloud in sentences many times. Remember that if you truly want to be an advanced student, your pronunciation should be almost, if not completely, perfect.
homework. Using what you have learned in this lesson, go back to chapter 7 and 8 of your audiobook and try to spot all the irregular verbs. Listen and repeat all the sentences that have irregular verbs in these two chapters. If you find irregular verbs in infinitive or present tense, try to say the past tense as well as the past participle. If you make any mistakes, correct the mistake and repeat the verb until you are convinced that you won't make the mistake anymore. For example, suppose you confuse the past tense of fall with the past tense of fill. Go over both tenses, make sentences with them, and repeat them aloud. Make sure that you know the sound using software like Google Translator or something similar. If you find that you don't know the past tense or past participle of any regular verb, Take a look at the list included in this lesson and repeat them aloud many times. Take a look at the list included in this lesson and repeat it aloud many times. Remember that you have to master these sounds and you can only do this by repetition.